Hi, I'm Elliot and I'm here at the Hackaday Super Conference with Scotty Allen, a guy who's made his own iPhone. First of all, what is up with making your own iPhone? Yeah, I, I had been hanging out in Shenzhen, China. I really consider it the, the heart of the electronics manufacturing world right now. Um, tons of consumer electronics are assembled there. Um, it's very possible you have a device that was made there. Um, a lot of the iPhone and iPads uh, have been manufactured there, though that's starting to move around a little bit. Um, it's Shenzhen as a city is just across the border um, from Hong Kong. And it was the first place that the Chinese government experimented with the idea of capitalism and opening itself up to the rest of the world. And so they created this special economic zone in Shenzhen uh, to, to allow sort of trade, external trade. And I kept walking through the cell phone repair markets on my way to the, like, the components markets to get parts for my projects. And I was seeing all of these cell phone parts you know, out under glass cases. And they all like, and you don't know sort of in-depth cell phone repair, they all just look the same, right? Like, oh, all, those are all screens. And then there's a bunch of other sort of parts and you don't really know what they are. But I really, like, there's tons of frenetic energy in that portion of the market. It's super active compared to, to other portions of the market. And um, I wanted an excuse to really dive in and understand like, what the heck is going on here, right? Like, like why are there like people shucking old cell phones on the sidewalk like oysters? And like, okay. where, do those, where do those circuit boards go? And like, why? Like they're, old, like, they're old feature phones. And then there are people like taking, taking chips off them and like re-reeling them. What, what's going on here, right? Okay. And so I was hanging out one night with a bunch of other open source hardware hackers. And we were sitting around drinking beer and eating street barbecue. And, Someone said, you know, I've been walking through these markets and I wonder if you could buy all the parts that you needed to assemble like an iPhone or something. And I was like, that's a great idea. Like yeah. that would be a great way to understand what's going on in these markets. And then she didn't do anything with it. Like none of us did anything with it. Yeah. And I was like, nine months later, this is like still stuck in the back of my head. And I was like, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. And this is a great idea to like turn into a video. Like there's, a, there's clearly a story here. And I'd never really done that. I've been kind of dabbling a little bit with video, but I was like, I'm going to try and do this. I'm going to try and make a video about it. That's awesome. So what kind of parts do you need to make a cell phone? Yeah, so it's Where actually... Where do you start? What's the raw material? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually started with the iFixit teardowns because okay, they're just yeah. such good pictures and they're such well illustrated. Um, and yeah, I sort of, I spent a lot of time like wandering around the markets, but it turns out you really only need four parts. Okay. You, uh, there are four main parts. Uh, you need the like metal shell, the back of the phone. Uh, you need the screen. You need the battery and then you need the logic board, which is like the motherboard of the phone. And there's a couple other things, like there's, there's lots of little brackets and screws and there's some cameras and stuff that are extra parts and a couple like, like the flexible cable assemblies that have buttons on them. But like those four parts are really the main thing that you need. Right. Um, and if you can get those four, like you can, I mean, even with three of those, you don't even really need the case, but if you've got a battery, a logic board and a screen, you've got a, a like minimum viable phone yes. that you can boot up on your desk and yeah. get running. I busted a phone. I so you you know you take the screen off and you just get a new screen on eBay or whatever, yeah. and you just put totally. it in. Hopefully, you get all those little connectors done. Totally. Yeah, yeah. But everything's fiddly in there. It's all yeah. tiny. How do you yeah. deal with that? Yeah. Well, I mean, the the simple answer is that when you live like a 10 minute walk away from the markets, you have a lot of leeway to screw up, <laughs> right? Like you can break things all day long and it's annoying, but it's not catastrophic. Like you're not waiting on parts to get shipped to you. You just run to the market, like buy a new one and come back. And most of it's pretty cheap. As long as you don't break a logic board, which are like, you know, a good, good portion of the total cost of the phone, yeah. like you're good to go. Uh, Is everything just off the shelf or did you need to make anything special or? Um, not, yeah, most jigs assembly stuff. Not for just assembling a phone, no. Um, the one thing that I had to like go to a service to do, well, there's really two things. Um, but the, the first is uh, to have the, the back laser engraved. There is a laser engraving booth that you can just go to and they have a very nice, uh, very high speed uh, metal engraving laser uh, that can put the markings on the, on the metal ah, back. Okay. Um, and that's incredibly cheap, it's like 50 cents. And they've got it all set up, they've got all the, all the designs already in there and you just tell them like what model and they oh, pop it in and hit go and it's, it takes like 15 seconds. It's just yeah. bzzz, it's Not done. necessary, but super awesome. Yes, right, okay. yeah, totally, yeah. totally, totally. Yeah. Um, it helps with like, uh, it is kind of necessary. It, they're taking off the atomization to uh, allow the, um, 
antenna connections to get a good electrical connection oh, onto the metal back because the metal back is actually part of the antenna. So, um, okay, so like totally necessary. I yeah, take yeah, it yeah. back. It's actually yeah. very necessary. And then they also put in some markings to help with like cable alignment and some other QR codes and stuff. So, yeah. sure. oh, and then the other thing is um, I really wanted to show as part of the story, I wanted to show the assembly of a screen, right? So for me, when I was doing this, I really wanted to focus on the storytelling aspect of this. Like I really wanted to, to go through the process as much as I could and sort of show that to people and, and show what goes into making a phone. And so there was a lot of questions that I was sort of in the early part of this of like, well, how far down can I go, right? right. <laughs> and, uh, and so like I toyed with the idea of like going to a battery factory, for instance, and yeah. like seeing the battery made. But I kind of drew the line a little bit above that. Um, but one of the things I wanted to do was I wanted to do the screen stack up. Um, right, because there's a whole bunch of things laminated for the screen. There's LCD backlight, there's a bunch of polarizers, there's a couple polarizers, oh, okay. glass, right, all of those pieces. And I kind of thought about doing that myself. They sell the tools to do that in the markets, mm -hmm. but it's like a couple grand worth of stuff. Uh, it's big and bulky and like, you know, I'm, I'm a nomadic hacker, like I couldn't yeah. fit this stuff in my backpack. I was like, I don't, you know, I don't really want to buy like a couple grand worth of gear just for one screen. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like if I was a repair shop, this would make sense. So I went to one of the screen repair shops and had them do it. Oh, um, awesome. and, and we kind of talked to them about what I was doing and they, they said it was okay to video. And, yeah. and um, so we get to kind of show people like how does that process work? And they, they showed us basically what the process is of them repairing a screen. Like if you drop, drop your screen and break the front glass, like what can they take off to, to get down to that like kind of base uh, LCD assembly, LCD and digitizer assembly, yeah. um, and then put new parts on. So, All right, so you did have a little bit of help in this yeah. endeavor. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. And I had some friends who helped me out with translation on specifically the screen part and then the logic board part, because those were kind of the most complex parts where it wasn't, it wasn't cut and dry in just sort of saying like, I want that. Uh, there was more of a back and forth of like, you know, figuring out uh, what all the pieces I needed were and trying to negotiate sort of, you know, is this new, is it, is it used? Like, yeah, there was, there was sort of more to figure out. So yeah. I had, and Helen and Frank uh, sort of independently helped me on those two pieces, uh, yeah. just, just with the language issues. So let's say you've taken phones apart, you've put them together from scratch. Yeah. What would you say to anyone wanting to hack on phones? Uh, I would say like, don't be afraid of phones. Um, I, I was really intimidated coming into this project and I think a lot of people are. I think, I think it's kind of this, I think people have this unnatural fear uh, and sort of expectation about phones as being this like black box, right? This magic black box, you can't open it, you have to go to Apple to get it repaired or have to go, you know, send it back to the manufacturer. If you open it, you're gonna break everything. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're super small, they're super fragile, they're super proprietary. Like all of those things are true, except not so much, right? Like it, yeah. it's, they're really, uh, my mental model now is that they're not a lot different than like a desktop computer they're just smaller, right? It is a, a motherboard sitting inside a case with a monitor. Uh, it's just got smaller parts and they're more fragile. And if you go slow and you're careful, it really is totally accessible to anybody, uh, you know, to any reasonable person. Um, yeah. Uh, and so I really, I really want to kind of, I mean, part of my, part of what I want people to take away is that you actually can hack on these things, right? Uh, they're not, they're not sort of, you know, magic indivisible objects, <laughs> you know, you can get inside these and like, it's, yeah, it's involved, but it's not that bad. Yeah. Um, Quasi user serviceable parts. Inside. Yeah. Right. I mean, they are yeah. like at the end of the day, Apple does a bunch of design work to make sure that this can be assembled by assembly line workers. Like a lot of the assembly in the iPhone right. is done by hand. Right. And it's not done by, you know, master engineers and scientists. It's done by, you know, relatively low, you know, low education assembly line workers. Yeah. So, um, so it is really designed for assembly and they are designed to be repaired. So like, yeah. So we can do that too. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. really awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for talking. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Yeah.